three, two, one, and welcome to Photo For Me, episode six. It's Black Friday special, and uh, this week we're going to be talking about the sale event that starts midnight tonight. We've got our guests, Pete Bresser and John Farnham. Pete is going to be talking about DPI. He's a commercial photographer from Kent, so I'm looking forward to that. We've got John Farnham, who's talking about uh, black and white photography and other subjects. And um, anyway, without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to the team. We've got Mike, who runs the day-to-day operations. We've got Mark, who looks after member success. Dan, who runs content and social. And me, I'm John. I do the tech and marketing. But without further ado, let's hand over to Mark to find out what's been happening with members. Right. So uh, we got 17 this week who sold for the first time in the last seven days. Uh, and I'm going to work my way through this list. There's some tongue twisters on some names here, so I apologise in advance to anyone I get their name wrong. But we've got Frank Metius, uh, Annette Johnson, Nicholas Bovin, uh, Frank Back, uh, Brian Tarr, Arta Bogaki, David Casper, Jeff Moore, Matthew Allmark, Morass, Ells, Viv Thompson, Heather Sheldrick, Robert Trench, John Kondrath, Stephen Covell, Liz Whitey, and Mary Spiteri. So well done to you guys. That was a good effort. Yeah, big a good effort, Mark. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Huge list there's some, as well. There's good names. There's it. Yeah. Uh, this week's uh, top five sellers. Um, as always at the top, we've got Mr. Bigger Dyke. Uh, then we've got Jerry Greer with four sales. Miles Gray, four. Ray Pritchard, and four. And Beryl Curran with four. So uh, well done to those guys. And um, now for the Editor's Choice shout out this week, we've got Northeast Images, Paul Andrews, John Farnham, Ray Pritchard and David Wilson. So there you go. Well done, everyone. Thanks, Mark. And uh, we're going to talk about how we're improving the marketplace at the moment. So there's been uh, a few changes at the weekend, which you may have noticed if you are a prolific seller on the site. We've been working on the algorithm. Uh, I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that we were going to be switching to a 60-day freshness. That has actually now kicked in. And so what do we mean by that? If your photograph has been uploaded in the last 60 days, it does get a boost in the search algorithm. So for competitive search terms, it, it does help you um, to get seen for the first 60 days. So that's good. Um, but the, the main changes we've also done is if your picture sells, that will get a ranking factor. And it, it, it always was there, but now we've increased that. So if you upload a photograph within 60 days and it sells, it will move much, much higher in normal listings. So after 60 days, that photograph will still be high in search. Ratings or the color cameras still have a part. They're about equal to sales at the moment. So we're going to monitor that over the next sort of two to three weeks and see how that impacts search. And we may well tweak that further and switch the balance even further towards sales. And the other thing we are building is a, a view counter. And I know a lot of members are, have been asking about that. And it is, that is on a sort of steady build. And we're going to introduce views to the algorithm. So when your picture starts to get viewed a lot, particularly if it gets viewed by uh, customers, it won't, be, it won't work unless you're um, a customer. And those views will, will add to this um, this ranking factor so if your picture sold five years ago that would still count in this algorithm so if you've been if your picture's been there for five years and it sold three times in a, a non-competitive word it will rank higher than other pictures because it has sold so let's let the customer decide really on uh, on the ranking factor that so that's that's quite exciting because it definitely seems to be um improving things i mean I know Mike's busy. <laughs> Just a little bit. Um, and you wait till so Black Friday kicks in. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, and we're also, we are working on collections. Now, collections, this week, we've now got um, collections working on test. Today, I had a meeting with one of our developers, and, yeah, we've actually got it working locally. So I'm, I'm hoping we can roll out a small version of it next week so you can start to organize your photographs into collections um so uh, yeah watch that watch this space on collections that's going to be very exciting development <clears throat> and of course in terms of marketing uh there's still a chance if you upload 20 approved pictures in the month of november you've got a chance to win 
500 pounds and now we, we've got a lot going on with black friday and we've probably not been talking much about the the prize uh, so we're going to probably release a bit more content about that because i don't know how many people have automatically entered it yet so we're going to run those stats to find out what the odds are of you winning it because it might be the fact that it's very a very good chance for you to win it so i'm going to i'm going to update the site with that soon probably before the next podcast but the big thing uh obviously that comes out tonight is our black sale event that starts at midnight tonight from midnight tonight there will be 15 percent off all sales and that does not come from the photographer's end of the commission it does come from us so it means that uh you've really got a lot of chances of selling we're going to talk a little bit more about that in the social media part of the show dan's going to talk about that a bit later so that i think is pretty much me covered over to you mike with products and what is selling yeah so um with black friday you know coming around in the next day or so, so yeah um christmas is well on its way we're really busy um we're having multiple orders so rather than the past was one picture being sold now we're seeing orders with multiple images in it so um uh, it's just general there's no theme uh, against certain points of the year where you might get springtime pictures or bluebells it's no it's just everything is up for grabs so get uploading um good news is is the there's been a decrease in returns or damages because of the box change that we i spoke about last week so um things are getting out the door and people are receiving products and they're a lot happier uh, or they've always been happy but a um, lot less issues um and with the download tool that john spoke about last week we have been seeing a lot of people using it which is great um and also it's been really helpful for myself and um i want to give a shout out to louise godwin because she sold a picture this week so congrats louise for that and she realized that she uploaded a picture a long time ago i think it was about four five six years ago and she realized it wasn't the best quality picture right away so she went downloaded the file edited it for me and sent it to me within a couple of hours. So it made my life a lot easier because I didn't have to worry about quality control calling me and saying, hey, this file isn't very good. Get on, go call Louise right away. It was just Louise took the initiative, got it done, sent me over, and it's just sped up the whole process. So um, for all you guys that are about to sell and everybody that has been selling, if you think a file might not be the best it can be, just download it, take that extra sec- second look at it, and just send me a new copy if you think it's, you know, if it's worth it. Um, I can't, you know, if, if, if pictures or um, if the pictures ch- change color or, um, you know, the, the crop has changed, I can't really accept that. But it's more about little um, dust spots and things dust like that. spots. Uh, yeah, just yeah, just dust spots and just um, resolution and um, clarity definition. That right. really helps. Um, and then lastly, there is a new function that's just come out on Photoshop or Lightroom. Um, essentially, if you have a, a bland sky or a sky that has a lot of, you're not really happy with it. There's a new, um, a new function where you can replace the sky and you give yourself a nice uh, cloudy sky with nice blue colors. So, um, I'm going to, po- <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm going to put, no put up a, I'm going to put up a post in the FAQs later. Dan's going to link it, uh, in the podcast later on. Um, I think that's right. Dan, you'll be able to link it. You're muted, Dan. Hello. Oh, there you go. I'm all good. Yeah, I just oh, make sure. I gotta make sure. Yeah. So if I put a if I put a blog up, you'll be able to link it to the um, podcast. Oh, yeah. without a doubt. Yeah, you can check the YouTube description for that. Okay, perfect. So yeah, I'll get that up later today, so you'll be able to check it out. It's just um, how to uh, guide, really rough guide, but then Google it if you're not too sure after that. Of course. Um, yeah. So, so that's products and what's happening this week. Um, and now I want to talk about the top five searches. Um, so in the number one position is Malta. That's a repeat from last week. Malta is just extremely popular. So any pictures of Malta, get them up. Uh, the Mourn Mountains in number two. Number three is New Forest. Again, a repeat from last week. So Malta, New Forest, really popular. Anglesey and the fourth bridges at number five. So if you have any of those pictures, get uploading, get uh, keywording and uh, start promoting it because um, People are looking for it. Um, and with that, I think we have our first guest uh, knocking at the door. Uh, we do indeed. Yeah. So uh, I think I'm going to introduce him. So uh, here to talk about uh, the, the, the pros and cons of DPI. Uh, Pete is a Kent, uh, Kent-based commercial photographer who specializes in portraiture and commercial 
uh, property photography. He also has a wealth of technical knowledge from his previous career working in technology marketing, and he knows his way around the complex issues of dots per inch, or DPI as we know it, or as Adobe has now called it, uh, pixels per inch, or PPI. Nothing to do with the uh, financial stuff, I'm, I'm happy to report. So uh, let's get Pete in. Hello, Hello, Pete. Hello. How are you doing? <laughs> Can you hear me all right? Yeah. Yep. Loud, loud and clear. clear. Loud and clear. Fantastic. It's all looking good. It's like it's, you're in your, your your home studio there as well. Your new your new studio. I am. Do you want to see a wide view? Go on. Oh, we can't can't resist that. Oh. He's showing off now. Look. Uh, <laughs> I'll capture two cameras. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm very jealous of that. Yeah, I you got us know. all jealous now. Yeah. <laughs> we all need a wide shot of this. Uh, yeah, you don't want a wide shot in here. It's just me head with laundry hanging up beside me, see? <laughs> <laughs> Ruined the illusion. Yeah. Uh, Mike, that's, I mean, every place is like that. It's like, it always gets me, it's with all the shots that you see on the, on the TV now, they've got these wonderful bookcases behind them. Have you noticed that? I tried that last week, but I didn't have enough books. <laughs> you just got to oh, yeah. fake it. Yeah. <laughs> Although, uh, yeah. Great. Go for it, Mark. So you want, Okay. You to... Yeah. So, Pete, thanks for joining us. Pleasure. Thank um, you for asking. That's cool. Um, so, can you shed some light on uh, some of the issues that uh, our members have been having uh, around DPI? There just seems yeah. to be some confusion. I mean, um, I know from from my old school print days that, that if I'm printing an image, I need it to be about 300 DPI. Um, but, but that said, I mean, you know, there, there are loads of different ways you can achieve the same results for print. So, so what, what's yeah. your what's your sort of uh, take on it? Okay, well, that the way I look at it is that particularly if, if we let's just talk about the photos for a moment. Okay, so with a photo, you're taking it on your digital camera. You set that camera up to uh, create a picture, usually with the ma- maximum resolution of that camera. So whatever its mega- megapixels are, my one runs uh, 6,000 pixels on the longest side. Some of the older ones uh, don't quite have that. They're um, around about 4,500 pixels on its longest side. So you're capturing an image at that kind of resolution, okay? That's the important part. Capture at the highest resolution you can, Okay. Don't worry too much about the DPI rating once you've, uh, uh, when you've captured at that level because it's not related to the quality of the image. It's related to the quality of how it's going to be presented. So, for example, with modern uh, computers, uh, they'll either run at uh, 72 DPI or 96 DPI. Okay, so if you think about that, I made some notes down here. Uh, so at, at 72 DPI, an image that is 3,200 pixels on its longest side, that's the equivalent to 44 inches. Okay, let's just remind ourselves, DPI stands for dots per inch. Yeah. All right, now, if you're running at 300 DPI, that same size would come down to just over 10 and a half inches. Okay. Um, And there's nothing wrong with either of those dimensions, okay? It's not going to change the quality of the image itself, okay? It's still 3,200 pixels on its longest side. Now, the way that you you need to look at it, though, is how that image is going to be presented. So if you're presenting an image as um, a photo, uh, and maybe a a good example would be... um, quite popular at the moment of photo books okay so the book around about eight inches or uh, a foot square or whatever you're going to be looking at the images within that book at arm's length okay Mm. and that's typically how most print is seen most print is seen at around about arm's length or we're certainly within a meter and that's why you want 300 dpi those dpis there those dots per inch if you've got 300 of them for every inch it's going to be a much denser image and a good example of that is i want to show you this okay so i made a little note can you see that so there's little dots on that piece of paper yeah right so you can resolve your eye at this level at this distance so what's that it's only about a foot actually 
my camera, you can see those are individual dots, okay? As I pull back, you'll see that they start to create a line, okay? Mm -hmm. And nice. that is because the camera, I'm, I'm, I mean, and I'm about maybe two, two and a half feet away. I do this in metric, but I don't really understand it. <laughs> I'm too old. I don't care. So as long as, you're, as, long as you get the idea, it's, I'm, I'm a lot further away now. Okay, so you can see that look, now looks like a line rather than individual dots. Mm. Okay, and that ultimately, that is the, the essence of why you're using uh, different levels of DPI within the images. So lots of people say to me, oh, you need 300 DPI. And it is true to a point. But a lot of it is to do with viewing distance. So I used to do a little bit of um, uh, print brokering years ago. And we used to produce these things called lenticular images. Now, a lenticular image basically it has an optical level of plastic over top of the image. And if you've ever seen them, you'll know what these are. It's like when you move them, you can either see 3D in them, okay? Or you're seeing two or three images, sometimes more. And as you move it, it changes the image, all right? Now, the optical grade of plastic uh, for posters, uh, and that, so I'm going to move slightly now. So what we used to talk about there is lines per inch, okay, LPI. And on a poster that was maybe um, A1 size, so reasonably large, that LPI would drop to around about 30, to around about 30, 30 LPI. Right. Because it's being viewed at beyond six feet, okay, usually actually with the three meters. Yeah. So it, even in that, you, and you'd look at it and go, oh, God, that's an amazing poster. You'd, you'd, you'd look at it and go, that's amazing to be able to see that image move. And yet the resolution of it, those dots or those lines, very, very, very low. And uh, if you look at um, print for – so a good example is, you, have you ever seen these building wraps? So if you go to yeah. a building and they're, like, they're, they're putting scaffolding around it to make it look all nice and tart it up a bit, they put other pictures on fr on, on, in front of it, okay? The viewing distance for that, obviously, for most people, is probably going to be 10, 12, 20 metres away. Mm -hmm. You can get the resolution of the images on there. Remember, the, I mean, the, the biggest camera resolution at the moment, if you get a by Hasselblad and it's like 50, 60 megapixels, okay? Even that, if you would never, ever be able to fill that space at 300 dpi. It just wouldn't work. Yeah. So they don't so, use 300 dpi. They get down to, it's around about 50 to 80 dpi. So if someone's got a, a large canvas on the wall, Mm -hmm. And their sofas, say, five feet away or six feet away, maybe 72 dots per square inch is fine. It could be, but it's better. So actually, at that sort of distance, most printers will say need to be running at around about 150 dpi. Okay, right. so it, so how far you are away from the camera. So if you're at, at like at arm's length level there, 300 DPI is going to enable you to see a contiguous image. You're not going to see the individual dots. Whereas if you was printing at 150 DPI at arm's length, you'd see those dots, just like I showed you with the, the line of dots here. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, so for our purposes, it's better to print at the highest level at 300 just because you don't know what distance people are going to yeah. look at the picture at. well that's i was going to go on to say that so the thing about it is that you don't know what it is that people are going to order from the site it might be a massive canvas let's hope so let's hope that photographers <laughs> sell the biggest thing they got because the bigger it is, the more expensive it gets but they might be only want prints you know they might only want them that size they you know that's that's the thing but if so if you're saving those images at the maximum um the maximum number of uh, pixels, okay, yes. well, you're saving it at uh, 300 dpi, it means you've got a massive latitude to enable you to do something that's really big, even if it's a lower resolution, down to something that's small, that's only going to be viewed at arm's length. Cool. Okay, so you've, you've got that flexibility to be able to use that artwork in any way that the printer needs. Yeah. It's better to end up with, it's better to have more information and pare it down than it is to have a little bit of information and try and scale it up. Because I can tell you now, that never ends well. No, no. That's exactly what, what, how I used to operate. So always go big. 
<laughs> go big or go big. home. Exactly. <laughs> That's brilliant, Pete. I've well, been working on that on my waistline as well. It's, it's worked. <laughs> You'll be both. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's oh, cleared up a lot of. Yeah, I think yeah. that's cleared up a lot of questions from the community. Good. I guess it's it's now time for ourselves to go away and figure out how we can communicate that best on the website <laughs> to uh, <laughs> to minimise any confusion for our members. But um, great to see yeah. you, mate. Thanks very much for coming on. Uh, absolute pleasure, you know. Yeah. It's always great to see you, even though you have got a terrible beard, John. <laughs> ah. <laughs> is it, well, is it, it, it's next to this. It always looks bad, doesn't it? That's the trouble. I, th- I think that's what it is. It might, <laughs> it's why I've shaved mine off. It's a, it's a hierarchy. <laughs> there is definitely, isn't there? There's, it, is, it, it goes longest with Mark, then maybe, yeah, John, well, I, I think, I, Daniel, I think and then finally Michael. Hey. And then Michael. <laughs> that's all right. I just shaved. I must be, I must, um, be follically challenged. That's what it is. <laughs> I am. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, lovely right. then, Pete. Thanks Cheers, a lot. Cheers, Pete, mate. I'll catch up with you soon. See you. Bye. Be cool. Catch Cheers, you Thanks, See you later. Bye. Bye. Oh, God. I've... Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Oh, well, thanks a lot for Pete joining us. Mark, I think it's now time to go back to you for your fantastic member success uh, yep. presentation. Absolutely, yeah. Our so, favourite um... bit. <laughs> is it your favorite bit? Uh, sure my is, favorite mate. bit. Okay. <laughs> so um, hopefully you can all see my screen. Um, I, I've got a, a, a good list and a, a naughty list this, this week. Um, I think I'm to do it because we're still on the issues of keywords. I, I said that I would drop it last week, but um, I think we still need to talk about it. Um, so in my good list this week is Tracy Smith with this beautiful image of Ribblehead. And in the keywords, it, it's got Ribblehead, uh, Ribblehead Viaduct in there. Uh, it's a cracking image, and the keywords are spectacular. Uh, the same for Alan Barker's uh, Hol- Hollywell Bay sunset here. Um, all looking perfectly good, and he's got all the right keywords in there. And uh, this lovely uh, image of Devon Beach here. I've, I've been on the beach when it's like this. Um, it's actually quite nice. Um, but George West Photography have supplied this, and they've put all the right keywords in, so it's sailed through the approvals. Unfortunately, now we get to my naughty list. Um, Alan Barker. <laughs> It's a great image from London, London Blues. And there's London in the title, uh, but everywhere except for your key words there. Um, so, it, you know, it's been pushed back for you to have a look at those keywords. Uh, you know, these, these images will sell if they've got the right uh, information, and this would probably sell in a corporate environment. So, uh, you know, it would do really well, Alan. So, yeah, if you can just fix that. Um, Chris, uh, lovely image of Prague. Um, you know, for when the days when we could all go out and travel. Uh, and again, um, it's missing from the, the keywords there. Uh, so if you get Charles Bridge in Prague into the keywords, um, you've got a chance of selling. Mm. And Stephen, uh, T's Transport Bridge, fantastic image. Um, I think we were trying to arrange a, jump, a bungee jump for one of our clients off of this at some point. Um, <laughs> we were, weren't we? <laughs> yeah, we were going to push, push one of our clients off this bridge. Uh, <laughs> for some reason, he bottled out. I can't figure why. Um, but um, yeah, again, it's missing from the key, key words. So if you could just make that small, tiny tweak um, back in the approvals um, and it will come through and you probably will make a sale. Um, my top tips for this week uh, is one thing. Um, please don't repeat your images. We get a lot of images, a lot of repeat images, a lot of people uploading very similar or the similar or same images. Um, and um, basically what happens is, is that the, the keywords get muddled or they get different keywords going on. It, it gets a bit confusing. I'm right on that, Mike. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's a big issue previously. Yeah, it's always good to upload one or two or three maybe same pictures. Maybe if you've taken a, different color or different angle or the clouds yeah. have changed or whatever. Um, but if you upload 15 pictures of the same thing, it just oversaturates your um, portfolio. Customers get tired of looking at the same image over and over and over again, and they'll move on to somebody else. So yeah. um, don't, don't overload it. But also more importantly for this month, if you replicate your content, um, you could be disqualified from our monthly draw as well. So yeah. do be aware of that. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, going, from, yeah, going through the approvals, I have this morning chucked out a, a couple of uh, replicated, images so yeah so um i uh, you know I, i've got loads of shots of uh, of this fort that i took on the day that i went out there on a boat trip um but i need to sort of think about which one i want to use so i'm gonna i'm gonna go back and edit 
and and just again go through your pictures, decide which one's the best one, um, and, and put it up. Don't you know? Don't, I know it's, it's difficult sometimes to edit your own work, and, and Are they trust different? me, we all, I think we all struggle. No, they're not no. different. I, I, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what, is there a wave that's slightly different? <laughs> <laughs> no, I did get tired to put, put all my different one, download all my different images. Oh. Um, but um, yeah, and I've just realized there's a spelling mistake on there as well, which is uh, oh, schoolboy uh, error. So it's actually Red love. Sands' fault. <laughs> Red, red, no, red, dude. red, sands red, red. <laughs> that's red. No, it was intentional. You might get a sale off that. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I will upload this at some point. I, I, I've been a bit lax myself. I didn't want to sort of, you know, get myself into the competition winning states because it would uh, look a bit wrong, wouldn't it? If I, if well, I uploaded, I think you're automatically disqualified. <laughs> and, yeah. and from a legal standpoint, presumably, water is water. It's not private land, right? I, I, one would hope so. Um, but yeah, I don't think it actually. That's yeah, the next I don't know. week's we'll episode, check. I think. Yeah, we do have to look at this. There's something else. Good point, John. Actually, that we we are going to be looking into is, is some of the legal um, uh, things that we've been pushing images back on. So um, uh, uh, for a later episode, I think we will be yeah. bringing that up. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's me. That's uh, my top tips. Thank you very much. Oh, amazing. The favourite part of the week, as always. <laughs> Jeez, my. I think it's about always time. controversial. <laughs> <laughs> always an air of controversy. Well, you know, you've got to have a bit of that, haven't you? <laughs> I think it is time we get our second guest on for the week then. It's our first first podcast episode with two guests. We're really pushing it out for you guys. This is our member guest, uh, John Farnan. He's a Scotland-based photographer. He's been a Photo For Me member for nine years, so a true veteran. He's sold well over 100 photographs. He's recently moved into traditional film photography he's been doing that for the past five years and he's going to come on and tell us about his experience his experience selling on the platform and any advice he can offer you so let's give john a warm welcome Hello. Hey. hey, John. Hey, John. How's it going? You all right? <laughs> Real good. <laughs> I'm sure it's good to finally meet you from Mike and John. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's been years. <laughs> oh, Thanks. good stuff. So, John, uh, why don't you go ahead and tell us a bit about yourself? Uh, what's your background with photography, your history selling online? Um, yeah. Go right ahead. Yeah, well, I've been a photographer. Since, as long as I can remember, you know, from my teenage years, then I worked in Dixon's and sold camera gear, you know, so I have a good understanding of it. I kind of left it for a few years and then picked it back up, maybe uh, kind of mid 2000s, you know, the, the early part of the 2000s, picked it back up there and uh, developed, you know, what I did. Uh, rather than just like kind of focusing on snapshots, I focused on the skill, you know, behind the photography. Initially back with digital, and then I kind of stopped with digital and moved to film again. So I'm back to my roots. That's, yeah, it's really interesting because I do you develop your own film? You I do, do I develop it. Uh, I've got a dark room as well, so I can actually print the prints as well as developing them. So I remember like as a kid having this little black box and uh, a little black bag that we put the, the film cassette in mm -hmm. and then you'd have to sort of flip the end off and then with your, your hands, you're trying to get the film. Does that, do you still have to do it that way? Yeah. So what I'll do is if it's a 35 mil canister, I'll retrieve it rather than breaking the canister so I can reuse it again uh, because you can get like bulk films that cost you less to run it. But yeah, exactly that. If I'm not in the dark room, then it'll be in a dark bag. Uh, you're basically doing it in the dark and yeah. using your fingers to figure it out. So it hasn't changed. The way you develop film is exactly the same. Uh, it's just no change in about hundred years, you know. Yeah. Oh, I used to I used to do the same thing at art college. I, we had a we had a, a, a little dark room there, and I used to spend hours trying to work out how to to, to get it. I never got any really great results. So so top kudos to you, really, because uh, it, well, it's, a, it's a proper skill. It's a proper skill. Color is so difficult to develop compared to black yeah. and white. I developed color and uh, E6 as well, which is right. your your slide positive. Uh, as long as you get the temperature right. You're yeah. absolutely got no problems whatsoever, but it's getting that temperature right. It's critical. If it's so right. is that the temperature of the actual um, the sluice, or well, I can't remember what my dad used to call it now. The actual where the chemical bath is. Is it the temperature of that? 
Rather yeah, so it's the temperature when you're developing in a is you use a small tank, right? So what you do is you submerge that tank in a bath of water and bring it up to approximately about half a degree above where you would expect it to be, because that usually translates into half a degree less in the tank. Uh, so the the E6 and the C41, it's temperature critical. Black and white, not so much, uh, but it does impact the time you develop for. So if it's colder, it takes longer, it's warmer, it does it quicker. It's, so, it's, it's very romantic. There's a, a real romance of having that red light on mm. in the dark room. And then you're just seeing, like, as you're moving the, the trade and you just start to see the image appear on the paper. <laughs> yeah. It's I mean, like magic. It, it really it, is. It, Every it, time it, I see yeah. it, I just go, wow. You know, it's, <laughs> I'm actually getting an image. I know I'm going to get one. I'm absolutely confident in that. But when you see it starting to appear there, it's like, wow. You know, and I think it does. It 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 forces you to think more about the photograph you're taking, because yeah. if you get it wrong, it's done. There's there's no going back. Yeah. You know, whereas now with a digital camera, I mean, I, you can go and stand on a road and move five feet two inches, get it. Oh no, not quite. Or I, I need to, you know, dial it in, dial it out. Yeah, um, and, and that so was one of skill. the best. Sorry, there you go. Oh, sorry, I was just saying there's so much more skill with film than digital. You have well, to really appreciate the art. With I digital, you can take a thousand line shots, line can't you? Can that. You can, <laughs> you know, but digital's also allowed so many people to increase their skill level, mm, right? Of course. To a point so where, the, you know, anybody can be a photographer, right? And you can instantly see those results. So it encourages you to get the results better each time because you can see you've got instant feedback. So you don't have that disappointment if your film doesn't turn out. So there's really the benefits of digital. Uh, for me, yeah, I, I, the more I shot digital, the less I actually shot. So I was shooting one shot and then that was it, right? Rather than <laughs> taking maybe 10. So it made perfect sense just to take a snap of it and film, no worry about seeing it based on the fact that I know how it's going to turn out. And if it doesn't, well, do you know something? That's the way it is. I, I'm, I'm, no, I'm no worried about making sure I get it because it's just, it's just a shot. I can always get another shot. Uh, and if, if I lose a roll of film, I'll be like, ah, oh, geez, you know, that was the best roll I've ever had. But the reality is it might not be. So it's, it's all good. <laughs> So you've been taking photos for as long as you can remember. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a bit about uh, your memory of your first sale? How how you got into actually, you know, going from personal photography work to yeah. trying to commission it and, and sell it? Well, actually, I don't remember how I managed to jump from uh, just taking pictures to getting to the point where I was selling, but someone recommended photos for me. And that's how I got into selling. Oh, wow. I recommended that I come <laughs> to you guys because you knew what you were doing, right? And you could, you know, basically get sales out of the market. And that was back, it's about nine and a half years ago. So the market was still quite undeveloped then. Yeah. And uh, that was the recommendation. I, I can't remember. It was one of my friends on Facebook that said it. So I give these guys a try. And uh, that's how I ended up selling. Uh, you know, over the years, I've, I started off trying to kind of take pictures of what I thought people would want to buy based on what I could see was the trending stuff. Mm -hmm. But as it went on, I decided just to buck it and make the trend myself if it was possible. So shoot what made me feel happy, right, rather than worrying about what the market dictated. Because if you, if you keep to that, you will at some point – the market will either catch up with you or you'll catch up with it. Yeah. You know? Of course. Yeah. And it, it's really important to develop your own style and operate within your niche because if you're competing with over half a million photographs all going for the exact same thing, you know, your chances of success are low. And that's why, you know, people are individual artists. They have to focus on what they wanna they want to portray as their art. Um yeah, I think. Um... So, so what's your process, John? Can I just ask for for getting from <laughs> um, the your 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 print that you've made in in your in your dark room 
to, to a digital format um, for, for sale? Yeah, so what I would do is, is that I would skip the print in the dark room unless it was specifically someone wanted it from me as a dark room print. Mm-hmm. Right? So I would digitize the, the negative. Right. So I use a, 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 a kind of high end scanner to digitize it, which gives me a really high pixel density image. I mean, even a small image that's coming out of that scanner is somewhere in the region of about 10,000 pixels on the side. Oh, so there's right. a huge amount of data in there, mm-hmm. right, which uh, works great because it means if I need to, which I hope I don't, but if I need to, I can crop it right, yeah. or adjust the image or even make corrections to it the same way you would with a, a digital image. So if there was upright corrections needed because of the parallax on it, then I can still do that as well. Okay. Uh, and then once it's digitized that would tend to be a kind of flat image I would bring in and then adjust it the contrast and then get rid of most of the the marks but I do tend to leave some in there because it is an organic process and I think there should be remnants of it in the print you know it yourself so do you use a like a flatbed scanner or do I you do use, yeah yeah yeah, I use an Epson uh, flatbed scanner, uh, the, the V850, which is like the kind of top end of their, their flatbed, mm. uh, because I found it works really well for my, look, the miniature format, which is the 35, the medium mm. and the large format as well. Mm. It's absolutely brilliant for each of them. Yeah, I bought a, just before I transitioned to digital, I bought a flatbed scanner, yeah. and um, I was I was really impressed. I mean, that must be, gosh, over 10 years ago now. But it, it, I've still got it because it does produce really good quality scans. And I'm, I'm thinking about going through like my grandfather or my father's slides and trying to see if I can find any material in there that's, that nobody else will have. You know, it's sort of my, my grandfather had a tandem bike and with his wife, they'd cycle around Wales. Wow. Incredible photograph. He's actually got a photographic diary of one of those trips and these photographs like what i I'm, want to try and do is recapture that somehow and go on that same journey that he went on with to the same locations and see if i can get like a color photograph of the black and white ones. before and after kind of thing yeah it's like but, capturing that emotion which i know is something you concentrate an awful lot on when it yeah. comes to the sales but it's how do you translate that emotion of the trip and the emotional attachment mm. you've got to into an actual you know product that's the customer will buy there there was a photograph that sold um it was about two weeks ago we were going to mention it in last week's podcast actually it was just a photograph of some steps um going up to a beach and the keywords had the beach and the location of it and they were quite quite recognizable these steps now so anybody else that means nothing right but there's clearly an emotional attachment that that person's got brings back memories of childhood or whatever it might be. Yeah. And like every year we go to the same place on holiday. It's a, it's a place called Pagan, Pagan Beach down on the south coast. And uh, there is a, a tiny wooden causeway out to that place. And I've taken photographs of my girlfriend and my kids there every year. And it, it just like I thought that is why they bought that photograph. It's nothing to do actually with – the actual like well it is to do with the location but it's nothing to do specifically with the steps it's about those memories those people have got and, and i think that there's two sides to, to that that capturing the emotion because the, the obviously you know the photographer might go there year after year and, and take the same shot with a different light and, and, uh, and a different sort of scenarios and, and they have a connection to that place but then you know someone else might also have a connection for a, for a completely different reason um mm-hmm. I, I think it works on both levels though yeah, it does. But the emotional attachment is the main thing when it comes to but it, buying an image. You see the image and it, and it creates this emotion in you and says, exactly. I want to buy that because mm-hmm. it's it's taking me back to that place or it's taking me to a place I want to go to. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, it really is. It's about creating that. Mm-hmm. you know, And that is one of the most difficult things about photography because if you just go shooting because you're trying to get a sale from it, you may not capture that, right? Whereas if you go with bringing yourself and putting that into the image, there is far more likely that you will capture an emotional attachment to it. Absolutely. No, that's fantastic. So, so John, when you go out, do you have a mindset 
when you go to take pictures that you're going to go in for a mono snap or you're going to for color? Or do you just sort of make your mind up at the moment? Like, where does that happen in your yeah. creative process? On the whole, right, I would default to, to monochrome. Right? That is how my process works. That's how I see. I look at an image in, I, in front of me and I see the contrast, the light, and what's happening in front of me at that point in time. Now, if there is something really spectacular going on with the colours, then I'll look to see if I've got any colour in my bag because I don't always carry it with me. I do tend to, to stick to mainly the monochrome. But it's I, I will go and assess a scene Right, and see what it requires right, based on w- what I'm seeing there. So it's like there's big clouds, right, but very little contrast. Then I'll go to black and white. right. But if there's big clouds and lovely colours, then, yeah, I'm going to load up some colour. It, it, again, it's about that connection to it. And can I relay what I'm seeing into someone else? Will they appreciate what I'm seeing? Right? But on the whole, I will default to black and white because it's, it's just how I, I see the world. Would you go as as far as to think about, so f- for me, I, there's a couple of places I do want to photograph, but I'm not sure what the light's going to be like. If I turn up at two o'clock in the afternoon, yeah. I guarantee it's going to be horrible light because the sun's right on the top of the sky. Yeah. Um, I should be at five o'clock in the morning or 10 o'clock at night or something like that. So do you, I know there are tools that you can use on your phone. You can see where the light's going to be. Do, do you bother to go to that level of planning? I'm a meticulous planner when it comes to things, especially for tidal areas, because I want to make sure I'm safe. Right, So I need to know that the tide is going out, right? or if it's coming in, I'm going to be able to, safely escape from that area right i will look at the where the general location is for the sun right so if i'm going to head towards the west then for me it's either it has to be right at the very end of the night or it has to be earlier so that the sun's behind you and it's not a not shooting down the list. yeah but by the same token i will arrive at a scene and i'll look at it and make an assessment at that time to say okay, even with the sun where it is, can I still pull the shot that I want from this? Now, if I can't, I won't take my camera out. I won't take a shot just for the sake of taking it. Eh? Uh, but again, that's probably just because of the years I've been doing it. I would have previously, uh, as my learning curve was lower, I would have maybe taken some shots to remind me I might take a quick phone shot to remind me of the time so I know, okay, I was here at this time of the day. That's uh, a great idea. So maybe go out with your – don't go out of your camera. Go out with your phone yeah, absolutely. And, and do sort of a, a recce like we did with, with the commercial that we shot. Yeah. I mean, the, the commercial for photo for me, Mark and Dan, well, you t- tell them how you, you planned that. Well, I mean, we went out, we, we – me and Dan had a, a the story ready, but we then went out and we we looked at the location. We took shots of the location. Mm-hmm. And we drew storyboards, you know, based on that, you know, because um, you know you can have a strong idea, but unless you know it's going to actually, you know, visually work. And I could sit sit in my my study here and, and draw it without seeing the place. You, it's a bar, never Mark. Know. It's not a study. It's a bar. <laughs> I study alcohol. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that. Based, <laughs> based off the weather, we did um, we filmed that towards the end of summer, so the you know the autumn weather was coming in hot. So we we had a two week weather schedule that we were constantly checking, and we done a bit of research around the golden hours of that location and picked a time that suited us. Um, of course, your you know, you're in the hands of, of the weather and luckily a lot of sunlight broke through the clouds that day. So yeah. it, it come off okay. There's you, only so lot... much planning you can realistically do until you hold your hands up and say you've done your best. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I use an app that gives me an idea of what the cloud cover's like, right? right? But if I'm looking for cloud cover, especially for a sunset or a sunrise, you need to look at a cloud cover about 50 miles away from you to see where that cloud breaking is at the horizon right Right. because if the cloud cover above you you're not looking at you right Mm. you're looking at something in front of you and it is approximately i think it's about 50 miles so if the cloud cover in the direction of the sun is low cloud cover you're going to get very little light 
breaking through the cloud if you're going for a sunset. But if you've got a break at the bottom of the cloud, so the low, the low cloud cover is better, then you've got more chance of getting a sunset. So there is that kind of level of detail that I do. Mm. But it's not unusual for me to drive somewhere, uh, you know, even as I say, a couple of hundred miles I've done it, get out and went, hmm, this isn't going to work today, right? <laughs> but take that shot, put it in my memory bank and say, right, okay, how will it work at a different time with different light and different clouds? Yeah, that is amazing. I, I think so. I think before we wrap up, we'd just really like to know, um, is there any advice you can give to the Facebook group that are without a doubt watching this and any member looking to to get their sales on photo for me? Yeah. Shoot with your emotion in mind. What would you like to see on your wall, right? Uh, don't shoot for what you see other people uploading, right? Don't try and copy it, right? Try and make something as unique as you possibly can. Okay, if you stay in somewhere like Glasgow where I do, right, you will basically go to the honey spot locations. And do you know something? It's about separating yours, right, from the other people, right, and making sure that it does sell. Get your pricing right as well. Don't, don't go for the bottom of the market, right? I'm a great believer in that, right? Don't undersell what your, your image is worth. Have belief in your image, right, and stick by it. Make sure there's no like dust spots, get rid of them, right? Yeah. Because Mike will pull you up if you make a sale, right? And yeah. say, John, can you fix this? It's happened to me in the past where I've missed them. <laughs> so make sure you do that. But just shoot for yourself. Don't don't worry about it. But get those keywords absolutely magic, right? Make sure the keywords will pull Google into the search. And then once you've got them into the site, make sure they'll pull them to your image. Use words that evoke language use your, your description make it evocative what would you think if you were thinking about it but don't get too technical people don't worry about things like it's a long exposure image or what camera it was taken with they don't really care what they care about is the emotion it drives them to that image and i said it better myself yeah i think Fantastic. that's the the best advice we've ever had <laughs> <laughs> all of us to take away as well <laughs> I think I, I think I found someone for our next advert. I think we'll just, <laughs> just get John on for the next advert. John, yeah. it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know what else to say on, on that ending. No, yeah. been, uh, thank you very much. To to you. Yeah. Yeah, well, lovely. thanks for having me. You know, and thanks yeah. for allowing me to get into the position where I can sell images. You know, because some of the feedback I got very early on from image rejections helped shape how i uploaded to the site and it made me concentrate on more of getting it right before it was uploaded rather than waiting on someone to actually yeah. tell me it wasn't right yeah. and that really included the wrap as well that was a killer you know how it wraps yeah. around the the frame you were watching last week <laughs> yeah i seen that you know that, that you, know, you can't remember getting my first images knocked back by one of the then moderators because it was it was moderated by photographers back then who was, uploaded yeah. and i was like huh what, what difference you know i mean seriously but then you see the wrap and you go oh mm. makes sense yeah, yeah, yeah. just get it right leave plenty of space around the edges on it and just get it absolutely as right as you can before it's uploaded oh Fantastic. amazing john we'll have to have to get you on in the new year i'm sure we'll have to have a little yeah. recap we'll have to have a john section i think <laughs> John's corner. <laughs> but yeah, hey, it's, John's. Been, <laughs> it's been re Any re time. really great, a really great interview. Uh and we wish you the best of luck with the upcoming Black Friday special. Um yeah. and hope you have a successful Christmas on the website. I'm and looking personally, forward to hope it. you have a great Christmas. Yeah, you guys as well. Yeah. Have a great oh, day. Thanks, thanks for having me on. It's been a See pleasure. Thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, thanks so much uh, for coming on, John. I think we're all blown away by that one. That was a really, really insightful yes, yeah. uh, interview, even for us to take away. It's almost as if he he's involved with everything we've been talking about behind the scenes. He summarised it perfectly. Mm. Um, I, I could sit and listen to him talk for hours, actually, to be honest, with, with, that, yeah. with that voice as well. So yeah, Amazing accent. Yeah. Silky smooth. Very smooth. Really yeah. great. Um, 
so yeah we are launching black friday uh 10 days of the black friday sale from midnight tonight um you guys are really gonna want to look out for that we're doing a site-wide discount of 15 percent off and as john mentioned at the start that doesn't affect your guys commission at all that all comes off of our business side of things um we're going to be rolling out content regarding that for the next 10 days um I've personally been working on some video content, uh, some advertising content that some of the members might not see, uh, but we're also rolling out a lot of organic stuff, really trying to promote um, your guys' work and and capitalize on this traffic that's going to be coming in. I have actually seen a lot of people uh, in the past week since our last episode mentioning our social media. A lot of you guys have been at in our Instagram accounts, our Facebook accounts, and using the hashtag photo for me. Um, I just want to say thank you. Uh, keep that up. I am seeing all of your mentions, and it's great to actually reach out to you guys and talk to you guys and see see how you're progressing on the website. Um, aside from that, the, the best advice that we're looking to give you guys is to stay up to date with our social media across the next 10 days. Like I said, we're doing a 10 day countdown and we really urge you guys to to capitalize on this event. Um, John is expecting a huge amount of traffic to the website. Mark's already yeah, quaking uh, <laughs> at the amount of work he's got to be doing. Um, so well, we've got yeah. Actually, one thing I, I wanted to um, ask, sort of, on behalf of the the members, really, is that how do I get noticed um, to become an editor's choice? Oh, so if I was a photographer, how would I? The how would I get choice. noticed by you? So, so what, what, who, what do you address the brown envelope to? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean the editor's choice is something you know we're fine tuning as we go. Um, with everything we do, it has to serve the customer's interest first and foremost, and then we hope to promote photographers' work off the back of that. Um, a great example of how we're actually choosing editor's choice is we're looking at you know some of the most searched phrases on our website. Um, I've got to scroll up now and find the exact name of it. Fourth Bridges is actually our editor's choice today. And that's because oh, it's right. it's in the top five searches this week. Um, so we're going through by hand, looking at what the customer wants and then selecting an image that jumps out to us. Of course, that doesn't, that doesn't remove your chances of becoming an editor's choice if you have a phenomenal photo that just jumps out to us. Again, the customer comes first, and if we can put a phenomenal photo on the front page of the website and across our social media, we won't hesitate to do that. But currently, we're looking at the traffic we're getting to the, to the site, the types of things the customers are interested in, and trying to put that image towards them on the homepage. So, again, so it's, a good, it's a good way of... So if people are looking at those editors' choice, so if I was looking at it and I saw for instance a, a photograph of glasgow i know that that's definitely the sort of stuff the yeah. customers want so it's not just about the fact it's a beautiful picture they've got the keywords right it's also the fact that customers might want to buy that yeah of course yeah and okay like that's we great. say the the customer you know the customer's interest is always uh you know our first port of call and we want to build off that so so, yeah, we will keep you up to date if um, we do think of any other ways to make a better selection. But we all we are also working on more ways to get onto the homepage and more ways to be recognized as a photographer. And we'll announce that in the next month or two. Right now, Editor's Choice is working. It gets your image on the front of the page and hopefully it benefits you and the customer. So... Well, thanks so much, Dan. Thanks, everybody, today. It's been a great show. I've really enjoyed chatting to the guests as well. And we will see you next week. See you later. See you later. See you later, bye -bye. guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.